This is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics and this is Ask the Aquaponics God, preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, back with another episode of Ask the Aquaponics God, we have a special guest, the first lady being featured on Ask the Aquaponics God. So hopefully, a lot of you women out there lingering around watching, hopefully this will inspire you guys to get up get an aquaponics system uh, put together and start producing. Primarily and statistically, you know, this is a man's sport here, but definitely there's a lot, a lot, a lot of room for women to get involved. This is for you too. So hopefully this inspires you guys to get out there and get growing and get to producing. So with that being said, let's jump right in to it. Hello Brooklyn St. Michael, this is Rebecca coming at you from Montana with my DIY aquaponics aquarium. What? The heck is going on, Rebecca? Woo! Now I'm gonna be moving here in a couple months up to Alaska, so I'm gonna have to dismantle this puppy here. And I'm hoping that you can give me some advice on where you see deficiencies in it so that when I set it back up, I'm not implementing all the same biscuit-headed moves. Now my goals with this were twofold. I wanted something attractive in my living room, and I know you've said it time and again, you're not here for the aquaponics beauty pageant, so don't hate me too much. I also want to grow food, and I want to be efficient at that, and so this is where it came into play there. I have a 20-gallon long aquarium that I started with, and I bet I can already guess a few features with it that need to be fixed. You can tell right away looking at it that I have sand substrate in there. And the little wiggly dude you saw just a few seconds ago is why. That's a coolie loach and they need it. But from what I understand that you've been telling people, Brooklyn, substrate is bad for aquaponics. And so I will totally be willing to change up what I'm stocking with in order to be able to find fish that can live in a bare bottom aquarium. That is correct. The substrate, what it's doing is when you're adding substrate and other objects in the aquaponic system or in your tank, what you're doing is you're reducing the effectiveness of that system. You're putting objects in there instead of fish. And the name of the game is to produce, you know, as much food as you can and, you know, in a given amount of space. You know, that is the name of the game of aquaponics. People don't realize that food is running out. Like, it's running out. So that's what I'm trying to get in people's minds. Like, you know, it's not about having a system that looks good. That's a different type of hobby, you know, aquarium hobbies and things like that. This is a food production method, so we want to produce as effectively as possible. And when you substrate and all that, it's, it's reducing that. When, also, when you add substrate in there, it doesn't allow the tank to self-clean. You know, it's, you have to go in there manually. You know, you should. You have a. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you have some type of uh, pump that uh, a vacuum that you can put in there and start cleaning out um, a siphon vacuum or anything like that. I'm pretty sure you have something like that to go in there and clean that out. So that's what it does, and that's what we want to prevent in aquaponics. Going to Alaska, unfortunately, I can't grow fish for food. It's illegal to have tilapia or trout or perch or whatever. So I do have to make do with aquarium hobby fish. So there's that. I do see that I have aquatic plants in here and they're gonna compete for the nutrients, so I'll get rid of that too. So those are two things I see right off the bat. If there's anything else, like can you have decorations for the fish to provide habitat or is that just not good? I mean, if you're gonna have a system with super, super low stocking density, then your system is not gonna produce much food as it is. So maybe you could use that and you, you can add decorations in there because you're not gonna be getting much production out of it anyway. So you could go ahead and decorate it and go ahead and go along that route. That's more so mixing, like I said, mixing the aquarium hobby uh, with hydroponics. It's not so much all the way full aquaponics, but it still can, you know, you can still slide by with that and um, still get some production out of that. But just don't expect a lot. You know, if you have only a few fish in there and you have a lot of substrate and a lot of other objects that are inside of there. So just don't expect much out of that. If I do, not if, when I go bare bottom, my idea was to have a kind of water pump that could basically just clean it for me so I'm not having to suck that poops out. And I had an idea I wanted to show you. Tell me if you think it would work. I need to give props to Foo the Flower Horn on YouTube for this idea, but as you can see, 
this system they set up is sucking all the detritus off the bottom. And my idea was to use something like that that could suck it up and then right into the grow bed. Do you think that would work? Sure, why not? I don't see why it wouldn't work. If they claim that it's working and they have the results to back it up, then I don't see why it would not work. I mean, you have a system um, with a fairly small amount of fish, so removing the solids out super, super effectively and super quickly, you know, is not something that you would be uh, too concerned about. And systems that we have here, you know, where the stocking density is, is uh, much higher, the, the, the solids need to be removed out much more rapidly. And that right there, that pump right there alone wouldn't cut it. So I can see that this would work in aquarium type of setup. Yeah, I don't see why not. Okay, back to my system. What I currently did was to buy a flower box that fit perfectly inside the aquarium. I'm trying to make this simple as well as attractive. And so I just had to do a few modifications to make it work for me. I cut in this notch here so that the water pump could flow into this side of the box. And it's coming from the pump down here. And here's where my next question comes in. You can see on that water pump I have a sponge. It's there for utility right now to prevent the coolie loach from swimming up in there and dying. But future forward, would a sponge like that be beneficial or harmful to an aquaponic system? Should I just have a water pump without pre-filtration? I would say that sponge is probably more harmful than beneficial because now you, you're, if you have a sponge on there, you're most likely preventing the solids from being sucked up in there. And that's what you need to happen. You need, you need the solids to be sucked up in there so they can be transported um, into your uh, your media bed up there on the top. So that looks like it's gonna be pre pre preventing it. And also, you know, it's uh, more maintenance. It's more maintenance. When you have to go in there, you know, go clean that out and uh, unclog it. So it's just more that's adding on to the work that you have to do. Well, that was one question. The water pumps up, comes right into my grow bed here. And in this grow bed, you're gonna see some bubbles, which leads me to two questions. One, do I need to lower my water level a little bit more? Is it still a bit too high? So yes, I would um, recommend you lowering the water level just a tad bit in that system. It looks like it's almost to capacity, and I wouldn't suggest anyone running any type of tank, you know, it's close to capacity. So give it a few inches, drop the water level just down a few inches, and you'll be fine. And two, the bubbles coming up here because I have an air stone at the bottom. And my idea behind that was to provide enough oxygen for the bacteria to do their job and fulfill the cycle, you know, and also to keep the plant roots healthy. But is that really necessary in a system like this or am I just wasting electricity on that air stone? It's very necessary in a system like that, in any type of system, to have oxygen. Um, people need to understand that oxygen is the is pretty much the fastest water quality parameter to diminish in any type of system. So the roots of that, so even if you don't have a lot of fish in there, you don't have a lot of plants in there, they still consume oxygen at a very, very high rate and a very fast rate. So I would always add some type of oxygen in there. And the only way you're gonna really know is if you have enough oxygen in there is if you have a dissolved oxygen meter to test it. So that's the only way you're gonna figure that out. So I would suggest getting something like that for every grower to get a dissolved oxygen meter. My next question is about the lighting. You can see it looks kind of funky right now. I'm trying to grow leafy greens right now. What I have in here are three kale. That's what I would go with, maybe spinach or some herbs if I had enough light. And what I'm using right now is this light that I bought was advertised as a grow light. It has 15 watts per head. Each one has nine red and six blue bulbs. They're completely adjustable. I can turn them on and off independently. Is that enough light for these plants? Uh, it's kind of difficult to see on there, but it appears that it might be enough light for the time being at least. It doesn't look like those plants are stretching. It doesn't look like they're elongating and trying to find uh, uh, more light resources. So um, that appears to be fine right then. But as they start growing older, then we'll have to determine um, if that is enough light. Especially if you're in a well-lit room, but maybe not getting any direct sunlight. If not, another addition I have is the aquarium light itself, which is 20 watts. 
red, excuse me, yellow, white, and blue lights in there, and I can kind of adjust the spectrum, and, and I could probably find a way to rig this up so that it hangs over the plants and provides them additional lighting. Is that necessary? Taking a look at them, and I know it's kind of hard with the funky light I have going on now, but I don't think they look like they have nutrient deficiencies or anything. Um, but do you think so? I think they look pretty good to me. It looks like we might have some type of uh, chlorosis developing um, on the edge of the, the kale right there. They look like some curled kale that you have there. Uh, looks like there might be some chlorosis that's developing, but you're gonna have that regardless. If, even if it's not showing right now, I can't really see it that, that well, but, um, uh, and the plants are still fairly young, but even if you don't see it right now, they're gonna it's gonna develop. And you're gonna need to be adding some potassium in there uh, and uh, a calcium supplement as well, because that's not gonna be sufficient in the fish feed. So even if it's not showing now, expect it to be showing coming up in the near future. But that comes into play for my next question here, which is the organization of this little grow bed. The water is flowing in directly right now. It's dumping fish particulate waste directly into the grow bed, which I understand is necessary for allowing mineralization to occur so that I don't have to add extra fertilization. Then it's flowing through all this extra filter media I have, which maybe this is biscuit headed, maybe it's overkill. I've got the sponge, the filter floss, a bunch of ceramic media here that'll allow additional bacteria to grow. And I really just wanted the water flowing into the aquarium to be as clear and clean as possible for the fish. And this clay media seems to muck things up. So that was why I did that. This appears to be fine. It really appears to be fine for that setup. We've got the water flowing in through all these holes that I drilled around the edge. Real simple, real simple. And then it just comes out into the aquarium like that. Now I've played with this organization and fiddle farted with it. Started this way, saw a big ammonia spike, got freaked out, switched the filtration over here and the grow bed over there. Then started to worry that muck was flowing into the aquarium that maybe I wasn't getting enough solids and was gonna have to end up adding fertilizer, which I don't wanna do, so I switched it back. Just honestly, what do you think would be the best way to do that? I think for your particular setup now, you know, that's what you're working with right, right there is, you know, is pretty much for, if you wanted to be that compact, you know, you pretty much have a good idea of how um, this system should be operating. But me personally, what I would do is I would I would not have, I would have separated everything. That's the way that I teach the systems here. I would have a sump tank involved in that and I would have a, the pump uh, in the sump tank and I would have the fish tank separate and I would have the, the media bed separate. I would separate all three of them and that's how you're able to function and work with all three of them and uh, kind of tweak each one of them. But when you have, you wanted this compact right here, then this is pretty much what you're working with and it's, you're gonna always have, you know, some uh, additional type of problems that occur because when you do it this way, you know, you really can't, you know, you really can't optimize it the way it should be optimized in order to do everything that you're trying to get it to do. Remove all the solids out, you know, and um, not have anything re return back to the uh, the fish tank. You know, get all the things that you're trying to have it do is pretty much it's going to be very difficult for it to happen when you compact it like this. So that is my little grow bed system. I'm already forgetting what I told you, Brooklyn. I ordered your book. Did I say that already? Your book is on its way and I've enrolled in one of your classes as well. I'm not going to have time to, to look into any of that until I actually get up to Alaska. So I'm hoping you can give me a little advance advice here but also that when you're answering my questions anything you see is like red flag problems you can tell me where to look in that book to get some better answers so that i can understand how and why to fix it in depth um with the book you're gonna have to go through all of it you're gonna have to go through all of it and really sit there and you know it's gonna it's gonna take a few times to go through it Keep going through it, keep going through it, and so you understand exactly how what aqua, how aquaponics 
was meant to be set up and how it actually functions um, and then it'll give you an understanding on how you can you know set up your system to make it function um, in that particular type of way it's gonna be you know vastly different than you know the way that you have it set up now maybe not vastly different but it is gonna have a lot of differences um, than what you have set up now and then maybe off of that you can um you'll be able to um uh, configure your system in a, a slightly different way you can look into the uh, the the first chapter design fundamentals um and then that'll give you an idea on how to set it up uh you know how to place where to place the different components and the importance of having each component as well i mean the whole book you really need to i would really go through the whole book you know the water quality management ammonia uh, uh nitrite nitrate you know, all of that. I'll go through biological filtration, solids filter, all of it. I'll go through all of it and keep going through it. And then you'll get the gist on the fundamentals of aquaponics. And then from there, you'll be able to set it up and you'll understand, okay, I put this here, I put this there. I know if I arrange this this way, it will work this way. And then you'll be able to come up with all your type of, uh, you know, fancy ideas within the fundamentals of aquaponics. I really admire you. I really appreciate you helping folks like me get started on the right foot. And, and I just think you're the greatest, Brooklyn. So, you know, thank you so much for your time. It's much appreciated. Well, thank you very much. The aquaponic God is greatly humbled. I appreciate you putting and uh, the effort into putting this video and sending it over here uh, to me and uh, giving me a chance to look at it, Rebecca. Man, hopefully this helps out a lot of other people out there especially you know a lot of the younger generation a lot of the women a lot of you guys can get in there get going get growing um and start producing um you know uh I, once again i just thank you a lot I'm, I'm pretty lost for words i'm glad that i'm able to inspire you and to get you going um i hope to do a lot and inspire a lot of other people out there and with that being said this is brooklyn saint michael with the school of aquaponics